I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like... In the early days of television, congressional hearings were held to discuss the type of images that would be forced on the people's brains, mostly about black America. In 1915, the first ever movie to be shown in the White House was the movie that was probably the worst movie ever filmed. the original birth of a nation. President Woodrow Wilson showed it at his inauguration. He said it was like writing history with lightning. Segregation started in the late 1800s. There was not much contact with black people. So they knew strategically how important it was to make black folks look bad. Throughout the history of television, how many masculine black fathers have you seen? I'm not talking about good fathers. Philip Banks was a good father. Carl Winslow was a good father. I'm talking about masculine, that grit, that I'm not taking any from anybody type of father. The take no sh type of father. How many of those have you seen since James Evans? You all gonna really love it here. You are. It's gonna feel just like home. Trust me. Oh, you live in the projects? Oh, it's pretty fun of that little girl. Pretty fun of that. Real nice. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Look at that big ass donut. Anybody want a big ass donut? That's the best big ass donut I've ever had in my life. Damn. Mmm. Mmm. Anybody sure they don't want to buy this big ass donut? Let him go. Who you supposed to be? Um, Dad, it's okay. Dad? He wasn't surprised that was my father. That was just the first father he had ever seen. So I'm supposed to be afraid because you brought your daddy out here? You know, you're supposed to be scared because if you ever put your hands on my son again, you ain't going to jail. I'm going to jail. What you gonna do? You find out what I'm gonna do. I'm a teenager. I can't be seek out on a date with my parents. No one will ever ask me out on a date again. Oh, this just gets better and better. <laughs> We are not old, baby. We're hip. Yeah, we down. Hey, Jack, what, what's going on? <laughs> Me, boy? Huh? That the joint steal what? 
Monopoly dice. No, 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 I am not playing Monopoly with you, no. Why not? Because you always end up making everybody cry and you steal money from the bank. I do not steal... <laughs> All right, take a, I'm in jail already, so I just borrow a couple of... Oh this one right here. Oh. That one? Yes. Oh, it looks so good. That is a pretty class. Yeah. Take a little taste. So good to me. Don't good. tell my chubby buddy. I ain't gonna tell the chubby buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jay. Oh, I Nancy Green, also known as Aunt Jemima. She was born March 4th, 1834 in Montgomery County, Kentucky. In 1890, she was approached by R.T. Davis Milling Company to represent Aunt Jemima. Mammy was one of the dominant caricatures of African-American women. She was dark, she was a large woman, she was, at least by American standards, an unattractive woman. She had children, and yet she was often perceived as being desexualized. She was loyal to a fault. And that image of Mammy became this image that many white Americans associated with wholesomeness. So her face was placed on breakfast foods and other kitchen related objects. And so what we did here is to put literally dozens of Mammy images in a kitchen. See, white folks in this era wanted to use black faces to sell their products. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, it was extremely popular to use a black face to sell your product. Everyone wanted to use a black face. As far as food goes, the thought of selling the food coming straight out of the Negro's kitchen or colored style food or Southern style food drove white America crazy. Most food products had a black face on it because the world loved black folks cooking. Aunt Jemima was first showcased at a fair in Chicago in 1839. Then she was made even more popular in the movie Gone with the Wind, played by Hattie McDaniel. Boot licking, shucking and jiving, tap dancing, all to please white folks. Uncle Ben's Rice. Uncle Ben's real name was Frank Brown. Frank worked at a hotel restaurant in Chicago. And a guy named Gordon Harrell spotted him and asked him if he could use his face for his rice company. Frank accepted, and Frank was paid $50. Jack Daniel stole his recipe from a slave named Nearest Green. In Jack Daniel's biography, he admits it and speaks about Nearest Green all throughout the book. They play it off as some type of friendship. Some type of happy story, a happy ending. 
they play it off as like these two were so close. If they were so close, then how come Nears Green's family to this day are only employees for the Jack Daniels company? Nears Green now has his own brand. So think of who you are supporting the next time you want a bottle of Jack. Only one way to cook Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken, and that's my way. We always use plump young broilers, always fresh, never frozen chicken. It's cut in pieces, and each piece is dipped in milk and egg wash, then into seasoned flour, in which we have the 11 different spices and herbs for flavor. One more thing, folks. It's the only way that you're going to get chicken that is finger licking good, and I'd be mighty proud to have you try Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mighty proud. Excuse me, Mother, will you please? <laughs> hey, look at there. Didn't I tell you it was finger licking good? <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken If you want Kentucky Fried Chicken You have to visit me Good old Colonel Sanders stole his recipe from an elderly black woman that they call Miss Childress Miss Childress from Kentucky In a book called America's Most Wanted Recipes. Author Ron Douglas speaks of how Miss Childress was only paid $1,200 instead of having this KFC empire. Kentucky Fried Chicken was opened up as a fast food place for travelers and people passing through. All the black folks around Kentucky knew about this everybody knew what was going on but she couldn't prove it but in a my word versus your word type of thing against a white man in the 1930s she pretty much didn't have any choice she accepted the $1,200 Miss Childress had no proof. And that's the only reason Colonel Sanders is the face of KFC. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please share. And please leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. The two books referenced in this video, you can hit the link in the description below for more information.